Hello and happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, I just wanted to come on here and show you things that I've sewn. It's been... I've been st strictly crocheting very little sh sewing for the last two years. Um, two years ago, I had to put my... I made the choice. I didn't necessarily have to, but I made the choice to put my children in homeschool. Because of transportation issues, they didn't have transportation to the school that I wanted them to go to and the school that they were um, deemed by the district to go to. I didn't have transportation to to pick them up if I needed to go, so I decided to homeschool them that year. Last year, I decided to put them back in school regardless of transportation, so... Um, this is a baby nest that I made. If I do make another one, I will make it different. I will make it probably more like the pattern, but I'll just make it different. I, I know exactly how I'll make it different, um, but I'll just make it different. So this is um, the... Some of you may recognize the Jungle Baby print. This was actually left over from a diaper bag that I made. Um... I know maybe at least two people have seen one person I sent the picture to, the other person may have seen it because I sent the picture to the, the first person, and if you've been on my Instagram, I believe it's on my Instagram, way down, like 2014-ish, like way down in my Instagram, <coughs> because that's when I made it, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the little, actually the little girl that I'm, that um, was the baby that I made it for, the diaper bag for, is in, started kindergarten this year, so. Um, so this is a baby nest, and you can have it, so you can have it, this, you, I could have it this color on the inside, or the jungle babies on the inside. And you just flip it over, and turn it like this. And you can, and there you go. Um, I just choose to have the blue on the inside instead. Um, I would probably, if I made one of these to sell, I would probably have to do some pricing because I don't know what I would sell it for. So I'd probably have to do some pricing. Um, I did want to show this guy off, and I think I showed him off in a video that I ha still have in my archive, but I set it to private. Um, that video did not have any sound to it, so I added music to it. This is the first, or one of the first things that I've sewed. And I think it's the first thing that I sewed on this sewing machine. Uh, I want to say 97? Not 97. 87. I want to say I made it in 87, 86 or 87. Um, when Five Will Maskowitz, when An American Tale came out, this was, I wanted Five Will Maskowitz so bad. And I finally did get one. Um, but this was my version of, <laughs> I drew him up and then I, I don't know what got spilled on him. But I drew him up and I hand stitched his tail, but he's done by the sewing machine. Otherwise, I think, pretty much. So that's that's my first, my very first sewing project that I ever, ever did. Um, I could show you my first crochet project, but I'm not exactly sure where it is, so I'm not going to. Okay, so another thing um, that I made, and I made this just after I got into the Reborn Dolls, which is almost two years ago. Um, and this pillow, this boppy, I made this also. It's got Nebraska Cornhusker on one side and Red Minky, Red Bubble Minky on the other side. Um, I made two of these. I made this one and then I made one with black and red because that's what my son wanted. He wanted one for his reborn, for the his um, portrait reborn that I made, except he uses that pillow himself, and it's actually, it's a speckle bit of funny, because um, his brother, my, my older son, 
doesn't like baby stuff, like, at all. And so he always tortures him. My younger son always tortures tortures his brother with baby things. Any any baby, you know, his his reborn the the boppy pillow that he uses. Um but I know it's not very nice. And he knows it's not nice. But if his brother is bothering him, he'll grab the baby or grab the pillow and like, it's like a repellent type thing that he does. Um, so, diaper bags. Okay, so this is the full-size diaper bag. It is a pattern. It is a paid pattern. The pattern is by Linda Martin. Mar Martin, Martin, Morton. I, gosh dang it, I can't. She is from, she is the designer at the Creative Thimble. So if you look up the create, if you are a sewer, and you've not seen this pattern, and you look up the creative thimble, you will find this pattern. You will find this pattern in two sizes. This is the original size. It is uh, like a 15 by 5 by something, by 18 I think, some, some somewhere around there. So, I do my bags differently than what she does her bags. So, I'm going to tell you how I do my bags. I'm not going to tell you how the pattern is. Okay? So, and I'll, I'll tell you the changes that I've made. Okay? So, this is the front. There's a, a little front zip pocket here. And there is a bigger pocket here. Bigger, well... They're both kind of little. They're about seven. I think they're seven inches wide, something like that. Um, there's two side pockets. Now, what I do with my side pockets, and I this is actually an older bag that I've made. That I made. I carry it around as a purse. I do have baby things in it now because I don't carry around a purse. And if I do, it's a crocheted purse that I made. Um, but yes, I did make this. Um, so I'll tell you what this is and I'll tell you the changes that I've made in my newer bags so this um, what I do it calls to put fleece in this you know between the two pieces of this pocket I put the insulated fleece in there and there's one of my bottles and I just did a little cover crocheted a little cover for it um, so and then the side panel the side piece also is the insulated fleece on on both sides and they've got these um, cam locks so you can make it make the pocket smaller um, you can cinch up the pocket if you want and then move up the cam lock it's kinda hard to do with one hand okay so I'm gonna turn the bag around before I show you the inside I'm gonna show the show you the back so the back is now this is where I've changed it I've added this zipper pocket in the back so you have this zipper pocket and what I usually use this for if if I was using it like as a diaper bag I would use this pocket for my stuff like my wallet or miscellaneous paperwork that I need I'd stick it in there um, this pocket has a magnetic snap and I just have miscellaneous stuff in there right now papers and things bags um, so the inside now let's get to the inside so the inside of this bag is very large now this pocket right here is not supposed to come out but when I first made it it was it, I did sew it in the bags that I make now, I do not sew that pocket in. I leave it out um, because it was requested. And people seem to like it that that pocket comes out and they can put diapers and they can put wipes in there and they can take that pocket out of the bag, take it to the bathroom and leave the bag with the stroller with whoever else is watching their stuff, take it to the bathroom, deal with the baby and that without carrying such a large bag. Um, 
So there's three pockets here. There's this pocket. I just have hand sanitizer in there. I have diapers and wipes in there. This pocket has a changing pad um, and baby powder in there. And then there's two pockets over here. This pocket is for pencils. I have a pen in there, pen, pencils. And I have a bottle of water um, over there. And then the bottom or the inside is, like I said, is very large. You can stick a whole ton of stuff in there. Um, the top zips up. And so that's how that one is. Now, um, the changes that I've made since this one is, like I said, this pocket I now, this pocket right here, I now um, have it so you can ha put it in there or you can take it out. Either one, if you don't want it in there, if it doesn't fit in there for whatever reason, you can put it back, you can put it back here, you can not use it at all, whatever. Um, another thing that I've changed is I've put, it's called pull or polyurethane laminate, and I use it for this, this part, the inside part of the bag. Now the inside part is two parts, and the outside part is four parts. So, but I put that on the inside. That way you can kind of wipe it down. If it gets wet, it's not going to really matter as much as if it's like completely all cloth. So that's why I started doing that, and I, I did that on, I think, I'm pretty sure just the last two bags that I made, both happened to be for family, um, and I would still do it that way, provided that I could get the right accent colors for the inside, um, I would still put the polyurethane laminate in, on the inside, just because then you can wipe it down. And it's not, it's not as bad if it gets wet, and you can wipe it down. So there's that bag. Now the next one is exactly the same, except for the size. Now when I got the pattern, I don't, I think I've made about 30 bags in various sizes of this with the same pattern. Um, so when I got the pattern. I can show you another one that's that's half the size and I think it's half it's either exactly half or half plus two inches I'm not positive uh, um, I'll, I'll get that in a minute but so I decided to experiment with sizes of the bags so the first one that I decided to experiment with was the half size and I'm gonna pause this and I'll be right back okay so um, I'm going to set these so you can see the size comparison. So this bag right here that's going to fall, <laughs> this bag right here is either half the size or the size plus, half the size plus two inches. And I got this at a, this fabric at a thrift store and decided to make this bag out of it. And again, this one is exactly like the pattern. It doesn't have the zipper back here. It just has this pocket. It does have the pockets on the inside. And the three pockets there. It's just very tiny. Um, I did use this as a purse for a little while. My phone it, that I have now is obviously too big for it, but whatever. So, as I said, I was experimenting with sizes. So then I decided to see what a 7 8 size was. So I mathematized it, mathematized the pattern, if that's even a word. Did the math to half the pattern for that one, and did the math to 7 8 Actually, you know what, I think that might be 3 quarters and not half. It might be, th I think it's 3 quarters and not half, because I'm, I'm positive <laughs> that half is way smaller than that one. So that one's three quarters the size. Okay, this one is seven eighths the size. This one right here, and yes, it's used, and yes, I've used it. Used it very well. I don't even remember what was in Oh, I know what was in there. Package of Band-Aids. You know, those little Band-Aids that they hand out sometimes. 
And again, this has the little things. This one has elastic here, but this one has the, the, the cam locks and the, the drawstring. And it does have the inside pocket, which I cut out and re -sewed. And the three pockets there. And the two, the two pockets there, and the other. And then the back also has this zip pocket and this one with the magnetic snap. So again, this is, this is actually 7 eighths the size of this bag. Um, I also halved it. And I think when I have, okay, I, I, I'm not sure that I have a picture of the half size. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of the quarter size. My friend in Nebraska has all the sizes of the bags that I've made. So she has this size. She has, she has this size. She, she has this size, this size, or she did. Whether she still does or not, I don't know. Um. She has, I believe she has this size, the half size, and then the quarter size, I can't find my camera, the quarter size is only like that big. It's like a, a Barbie diaper bag size, and I did it exactly a quarter size of the big bag, but I didn't put zippers in. And the straps were ribbons. Will I ever do that again? Probably not. I was just, like I said, I was just experimenting with sizes, and I wanted to see what size, when I took the size down, when I resized it, mathematized it and resized it, what the size of the bags would actually be. So, those are my, my little diaper bags. Um, I will be right back. Okay, so here's some more things that I've made. Now, this is my own pattern. I don't have it published, and I'm not going to tell you what the pattern is, so don't ask. However, if you're interested in one, let me know. And these are the only ones that I have. I do have some started because I did have an... I thought I had an order. I started the order. She didn't want them. So, um, this one is skinnier than all the others. The reason why it's skinnier than all the others is because I messed up and I had to cut it down. So that one's... That one is just a little, it's about an, about an inch skinnier than the others. So, we have an Arizona Cardinals. We have Patriots, Cornhuskers, Dallas, Southwest. This one is big, Arizona. Now this one fits, um, I don't have the phone on me, actually... I have the phone in my hand, so, but this will fit like a seven inch tablet. Um, there's this one, and these two Denver Broncos, and this Arizona, uh, University of Arizona. And then the backs, I'll show you what the backs look like. So, most of the backs just kind of look the same. And not all the straps look the same. This, this one strap is macrame cord, and all the rest of them are macrame cord. This has a made strap, this has a made strap, and this has a made strap. The other ones are macrame cord for, strap, for, the, for the strap. And so, um, so it's got, uh, we'll show you on this one. So it's got this pocket back here. And this, um, when I, when I carried mine, and I, I've had this size and I've had this size in this material. So when I carried mine, I usually had my phone back here. You know, the phones are bigger than what they were a few years ago. I did make these a few years ago. So there's the Arizona Cardinals. This, you can stick your ID in. Then when you open it up, there's Velcro. 
there's a, a long pocket here. There's a short pocket here for cards and a long pocket here. And then a zip for your change right here. And that's on all of these. Um, like I said, my phone got bigger, decided to design it bigger. This was actually um, designed smaller when I first made it. I had to design it bigger and bigger still. So the last one that I designed was this one. I designed it wider. Um, again, it does have the back, the big back pocket. It also has this pocket, the zip, and the zip is on this side. Uh, and then has the big pocket there, the little pocket there, and the big pocket there. So, I designed... The person that, the people that were ordering them, um, I no longer, I, the gentleman moved out of town after he took about 13 of them with him without paying me, and the lady, um, I had stuff going on, she had stuff going on, we didn't contact each other, and she didn't end up getting the ones that I had started. Um, I wasn't sure whether she wanted them. I didn't finish them. I didn't contact her. She never contacted me. So, Will I, pro will I ever finish them? I don't have any idea. But I'm just, I'm just saying. So anyway, these are the only ones that I have available that are finished. And so if you're interested, let me know. Um, I think there's a pattern similar. This pattern I made up myself. I made up how to do it myself, how to put it together. But I did look at a picture. The picture, I believe, is on crafts, craftsy, C-R-A-F-T-S-Y dot com. The pattern, or the picture that I looked at is a paid pattern. And I don't particularly like paid patterns. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I've only had two patterns, two paid patterns that I've ever had to, not because of a fault of my own. Okay, I've had three. One of them is a paid pattern now, but I was testing it. So... I was writing down things, mistakes that I found and was sending them to the designer. Another pattern, she had completely missed a step, missed like at least one if not two rows in crochet. Um, I contacted her, I ended up getting the pattern for free. I wasn't expecting that, I was just expecting the instructions, she corrected the instructions she reimbursed me. Um, I do like her patterns. And I would, I, I would gladly pay for patterns. Um, better when they're on sale, when there's a certain percentage off. That's even better. Um, the next... I'll show you something else, but uh, I want to say this first. So, and this is getting really long. So anyway... Um, the, the third pattern is not really their mistake. It was the way that I was reading it and the way that my brain was interpreting me reading it. And so I wasn't, it wasn't a correct interpretation of the pattern, so I wasn't understanding it, and that was my fault. I emailed the designer, and after I had to have read the pattern at least 30 times, in my head, read it quietly, read it out loud, read it more than once, counted the stitches, I did everything. And I walked away, 
and I came back and this is a lot of a lot of times when you have when when you have trouble whether you're designing something whether you're painting something whether you're whatever you're creating whether you're sewing you're designing you're painting you're whatever sometimes you just have to step away from it gain a different perspective clear your head whatever you have to do to get the correct be able to read it correctly or get the correct perspective so that's what happened with that one it was not the designer's fault it was my fault but um, that was the only other pattern so I'm gonna show actually no I'll show maybe I'll show it next time and several people have probably already seen it I haven't tried to do it in crochet actually that's a lie I have tried to do it in crochet but on a hook size not on a crayon size um, and I never did finish my hook one. It was shortly after I started crocheting and I got bored. If a pattern, I try to not use patterns that bore me. If I find a pattern interesting and it's not going to bore me, I will do it. And a lot of times I'll do it multiple times. That's why there are so many dolls. Um... And I'll just keep doing it because that's a pattern that interests me. It's a pattern that I like. I There's so many things you can change about different patterns and I love it. But sometimes there's just patterns that... Blankets especially. Um, just have a monotonous stitch. If you're crocheting, it's just a monotonous stitch. Monotonous stitch over and over and over and over and over Especially when you have like 350 stitches for a king size bed all the way across and you're doing the same stitch, whether it's single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet. If it's the same stitch you're doing over and over across the blanket. I did two twin size in double crochet. And actually, um, after I had seen a video of a double stacked double crochet, I used that and but it took me more than a year to finish the blankets because the first 22 days I had no problems the first 22 days I did a row a day on two blankets one blanket was the Denver Broncos colors so it was it was navy blue and an orange crush and pumpkin um, Orange Crush was at Michael's. They didn't have the Orange Crush at Joanne's. That's why there was two. That's why there's two oranges in that one. And then the other one was black and green. And if anybody's crocheted with black, you know what it's like. So um, monotonous stitches, the same stitch over and over. It just gets boring. If it's not to me, if it's not interesting, I won't do it again. And if, I, if somebody asks me to do it, or I'm paid to do it, I'll do it. But I'll probably be gritting my teeth. <laughs> um, I, you know, I just have to find the pattern interesting. So anyway, that is all I have to show you for today, and that's all, you know. The only thing that crocheted, the only thing crocheted that I saw, the only thing crocheted that I showed you was the bottle cover. That's the only thing. All of, it, all of the other things were sewn. So, anyway. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I'm going to get back to doing what I need to get done. So, I will see you later. Bye.